The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I wash, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, Ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, 
Do you believe in the Son of Man? And he answered, Who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, this week we are faced with a very long gospel reading from John. Indeed, it appears that John only knows how to tell long stories. But the story is important. And it's important in its length because it shows us character development. Now, I've never written the great American novel. I haven't even sat down and tried to write the great American novel. But I know many who have. And they all say that the thing that really brings them in is character development. So who are our characters? Well, first we have the disciples walking along with Jesus. And they see this man who for some, somehow they know has been born blind. And so they ask a theological question. <clears throat> Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? For that time, it's not a bad question. Indeed, even in our own day, there might be some who would ask such a question about how one uh, gains a physical or mental disability. But Jesus comes back at them with a whole new way of thinking. And he says, it was neither his parents nor this man who sinned, but rather that this man may be used to show the works of God. And so then, Jesus, in what we believe might have been the first mobile spa treatment, spits in the dirt, rubs together some mud, and puts it on the man's eyes, and says, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. It's no... It, it's no mistake that he gets sent to Siloam because Siloam is the place that means sent. And as we will see later, this man is sent to be an evangelist for the miracles of Jesus. But he takes the mud on his eyes. He somehow finds his way to the pools and washes himself. And miraculously, he can see. That's quite a development there of its own. Having been born blind, never seen anything, and all of a sudden, the world of sight is open to you. Well, needless to say, this causes quite a stir in the local community. Some people don't even believe that it's the actual boy that they've known their entire lives who has been, who has been born blind. So, they decide to go back to the authorities on matters, and they bring in our friends, the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees, at least the majority of them, aren't that interested uh, in the fact that the, the boy can now see, or the young man can now see. Rather, they are interested. Jesus of Nazareth has done this, and he even had the gall to do it on the Sabbath. A day when even your steps are to be measured, 
lest you work too much and sin against God. And for the next paragraph, they get in a tussle back and forth. And they ask the man three times. They even get his parents into the situation. And they're so scared of the authorities, they say, ask him, we don't know. And at the end of it all, the third time they ask, he says, I don't know who the man is. Is he God? Is he the Messiah? Is he a prophet? Is he a teacher? I don't know. But what I do know is that I was blind and now I see. Such is the character development of that young man in John's Gospel and such is the character development of our own souls. There are many things that we cannot see and we must rely on our teacher, our master, our prophet, and our Lord, Jesus Christ, to guide us through. To say that we are living in a time of uncertainty is a great understatement. To say that even the smartest, uh, most brilliant scientists around us are living in a time of blindness, not knowing what the next day or even the next hour will bring is a real truth. We are blind as to what is going to come next. But my friends, we have always been that way. We have always been blind as to what is to come next. Whether it be the phone call, that comes with the test results, whether it be news of a bank account or a balance sheet that all of a sudden goes from green to red, whether it be a storm that no one could have predicted its strength. We've always and are always blind in this uncertain world, but there is one thing that remains certain. And that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who takes the salve of his love and rubs it over our eyes, rubs it over our souls so that our hearts might be open to what? To knowing the future? No. But to see that Jesus has us. We are his. So in these coming days, there are plenty of questions to ask. How did this happen? What can we do next? Who are we to listen to? All excellent questions. But when it comes down to, is it okay to be uncertain, to be unsure, to be scared? The answer is yes. Because in the midst of our uncertainty stands the certain love of Jesus Christ that is with us in death, with us in life, with us always. Amen.